Let's move on to another topic in the news. Doomsday. The doomsday clock has hit 90 seconds to midnight, representing that humanity is one step closer to nuclear Armageddon. But what is the doomsday clock? The clock was first featured on the cover of a 1947 edition of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists magazine, an organization founded by nuclear physicists who wanted to inform the world on the dangers of newly invented nuclear weapons. Originally set at 7 minutes to midnight, the idea of the clock was to represent an approximate estimation of how close the human race was to destruction, which occurs when the clock hits midnight. Nowadays, however, the clock's meaning has been broadened to encompass a variety of global threats and is set each year by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists Board. The board, in conjunction with 10 Nobel laureates, set the clock's most recent time to 90 seconds to midnight, the closest the clock has ever come to reaching midnight. But whether the clock has become a sensationalist approach to scaremongering the threats of global catastrophe or not, it's interesting to look back at the clock's history and determine if Armageddon really is as close as the clock states. The year is 1947. The time is 11.53 p.m., seven minutes to midnight. World War II is over. Life in peacetime America is beginning to return to normal and many are full of optimism. But a group of physicists, many of whom were involved in the Manhattan Project, knew that their creation of nuclear weapons had opened Pandora's box. Many of these scientists predicted that a global arms race would begin amongst nations that would want to produce these weapons and hence needed to warn the public about this potential global threat. That's why, in the 1947 edition of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists magazine, artist Martel Langsdorff designed the Doomsday Clock which would count down to midnight, reflecting the urgency of the problem. Sure enough, these scientists were right, and by 1949, the time was moved to 11.57, just three minutes to midnight after the Soviet Union tested their first atomic bomb, the RDS-1, officially kicking off the nuclear arms race. Initially shocking the West, who predicted that the Soviet Union would not produce a weapon of this magnitude till at least four years later, nations ploughed full steam ahead with weapons testing and development. Between 1950 and 1959, 291 separate nuclear weapons tests had been carried out by the US, Soviet Union and the United Kingdom. This was a period where these nations were free to carry out nuclear testing as they pleased, with little international law prohibiting this activity. That's why by 1953, following the US testing of the first ever hydrogen bomb, a weapon with more destructive capacity than the atomic bomb, the doomsday clock was moved forward again to 11.58, the closest to midnight yet. But in reality, the true threat of these weapons was yet to come. It can be argued that the height of the Cold War was reached in the early 1960s, with the decade seeing peak nuclear weapons testing and events such as the Cuban Missile Crisis, in which a full-scale nuclear war was narrowly avoided by small margins. A time that historian Arthur Schlesinger described as the most dangerous moment in human history, whilst the US Defense Secretary at the time, Robert McNamara, notably pondered if he would live to see another Saturday night during the missile crisis in October 1962. Yet in 1960, the clock was moved back five minutes to 11.53, and once again in 1963 to 11.48, due to advancements in global education and cooperation on the dangers of nuclear weapons. One notable advancement of this period was the Partial Test Ban Treaty, which was signed by the US, Soviet Union and the UK, and prohibited the testing of nuclear weapons, except those carried underground. The clock was 12 minutes to midnight, the furthest since its inception, at a time where many historians state was the closest the world had come to nuclear annihilation, which questions to what extent the clock really reflects real life events. Surprisingly, however, Whilst nuclear attack drills were prominent within many parts of the US, sentiment did not follow accordingly, with American public opinion polls showing that in April 1963, only 5% of the population expected a world war within the next year, 
Although 72% did think that foreign affairs were the most important problem in the US in November of 1962, one month after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Nevertheless, by 1968, the clock had moved forward to 11.53, due to escalations within the Vietnam War and general unrest such as the Six-Day War between Israel and the Arab Coalition in 1967 over the control of various shipping routes in the region. Another pressing issue was the ambition of other countries to become nuclear superpowers, such as France and China. These nations' refusal to sign the Partial Test Ban Treaty signalled their intentions to develop their nuclear arsenals after first designing nuclear weapons in the 1960s. This would see a world with more nations than just the US, USSR and the UK owning nuclear weapons, which was a dangerous prospect. For the next decade and a half though, the clock had slowly moved closer and closer towards doomsday, primarily swayed by whether various nuclear weapons treaties were signed or not. By 1984, the clock was back to a peak of 11.57 due to a virtual suspension of meaningful contacts and serious discussions by global superpowers in relation to nuclear weapons, according to the 1984 bulletin statement. By this time, both the US and the Soviet Union had placed and were continuing to place intermediate range nuclear missiles around Europe with ranges up to 3,400 miles. Global superpowers had once again reached a stalemate and the newly elected Ronald Reagan was spending big on nuclear weapons, splashing out over $39 billion on weapons development. Although Reagan would later become an advocate for policies to reduce the levels of nuclear arsenals, the world in this period was divided where a fateful juncture had been reached, as the 1984 edition of the bulletin described, where the fate of the world could have gone two ways, the way of reflexive brutality or through language and rational argument, as the editors of the bulletin had hoped. Thankfully, the more peaceful option conquered. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The year is now 1991. The time is 11.43. The furthest the clock has been from midnight since its inception, and against all odds, much progress has been made to alleviate concerns of the population and the authors of the bulletin. Both the US and the USSR signed the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, which results in these countries destroying 2,692 land-based missiles. The fall of the Berlin Wall two years earlier signalled hope that there would be a more open approach towards communication between the global superpowers. And the signing of START-1, the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty by both superpowers, aimed to reduce the total number of nuclear weapons in circulation and eventually resulted in the removal of 80% of all strategic nuclear weapons that had been created. Although there was more positive rhetoric around the situation at the time, there was still much work to do. And as the bulletin stated in their 1990 statement, until the nuclear arsenals are completely eliminated, Danger from an accident, a miscalculation, or irrational act will cause nuclear holocaust. They end their 1991 address by stating that the setting of the clock reflects their optimism for the new era. But it was all downhill from there. With 10 movements of the clock forward and only one movement back over the next 30 years. Whilst the Cold War was over, military spending continued to rise, with India, Pakistan and North Korea all having developed nuclear weapons by the mid-2000s. The threat of climate change was first mentioned in the bulletin in 2007, being described as posing a dire threat as nuclear weapons. And the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, originally signed in 1987, had come to an end, with the US's withdrawal in 2019 citing Russian violations to the treaty. Despite this, however, there are not known to have been any intermediate range nuclear missiles placed in Europe, according to the Secretary General of NATO. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the related conflicts near the Chernobyl and Zaporizhia nuclear reactors in Ukraine have cautioned the bulletin to set the clock forward to its current time of 11.58 and 30 seconds, the closest the clock has been to midnight in its entire history. So we have seemingly come back full circle, and with the bulletin's latest statement titled At Doom's Doorstep, we are presented with a seemingly gloomy outlook. 
But when it seemed like there was no hope for progress in the 1980s, where we were faced with a fateful juncture, peace eventually prevailed. Whilst geopolitical tensions are seemingly escalating, world leaders have never been more aware of the threats posed to them and are informed of the weapons they possess. Whilst the US and its allies are providing support to Ukraine, they are being cautious not to provide them with any long-range weaponry that could be used to further escalate the situation in the region. Whilst Putin has made various threats in relation to the use of nuclear weapons, he has also made it clear that Russia's policy on this matter is defensive. The situation is a slow-burning conflict, unlike events such as the nuclear missile crisis, therefore there is less likelihood that either party will be forced into the use of nuclear weapons due to a sudden escalation. The most recent meeting between Biden and Xi Jinping saw both parties state that the use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine is totally unacceptable. Whilst a joint statement made in January of 2022 by five nuclear weapon states including Russia reiterates the fact that a nuclear war can never be fought, stating that a nuclear arms race would benefit none and endanger all. Thank you for watching Olive Stripe Productions. If you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos on a wide range of exciting relevant topics, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to be notified of future videos.